Hello everybody, it's me Laura again, and today I'd like to warmly welcome you to a beginner's guide to the world of Warcraft. So in this video today, I will be softly speaking as I take you through the World of Warcraft game. I will be going through the classes and races on the Alliance and Horde side, then I will be making a character and showing you the intro to World of Warcraft. Thank you to all of you who suggested this idea, and thank you to my patron who suggested a Warcraft themed video. This video today was sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. So if you haven't already heard about Raid Shadow Legends, it is a dark fantasy themed free to play game that you can play right now on your mobile or PC. I just wanted to take a minute to say that Raid is celebrating their second anniversary and in that two years Raid has achieved so much with the amount of content and champions you can access and Raid has never been in a better place than it's been today. So this would be a really, really great time to jump in to Raid Shadow Legends. So Raid is celebrating their second anniversary in style. Starting from March 1st all the way into the middle of April, for six weeks in total, Raid is having a bunch of different anniversary events and tournaments that you can participate in and even win some prizes. Raid is also having their first clan versus clan section of the game so that you can fight with your clan against other real players. They will also be releasing their first ever champion for the Shadowkin faction and I'm really, really excited to try that out. If you could be any champion in the game, who would you be and why? So I would definitely, from the High Elf faction, be Pixniel. I absolutely love Pixniel's silver and gold armour. She has this blue glow all around her and these really epic glaives. Or I would definitely be Lydia the Death Siren. She has these huge demonic glowing red wings and I think that is just super badass. What made you fall in love with Raid? I fell in love with Raid for so many reasons, but just a few of those include the on-the-go high quality content that you can play on your smartphone with Raid. I absolutely love the versatility of content that you can play through and the variety of different characters and champions that you can access in the game. If you want to get a huge head start in Raid, all you have to do is click the link in the description or you can scan my QR code featured in the corner and you'll get your free epic champion, Jotun, who is amazing for the Doom Tower. There's never been a better time to start playing, because for the next 30 days, you will also be able to claim 100,000 in silver, 50 gems, and the three ancient shards, so you can summon awesome champions as soon as you get in game. So get downloading the game as soon as possible to access them. So all the rewards that I just mentioned are waiting for you in game right now, right under this tab. And if you're quick, you can also join my clan by searching the name Lemurex, L-E-M-U-R-E-X. And it's really that easy. So just click the link in the description and you can start playing Raid Shadow Legends today. So, as you can see, these are my characters so far in the game. I have a these are all Alliance characters. I have a Night Elf Mage, a Night Elf Demon Hunter, I have a Lightforged Draenei Paladin, I have a Void Elf Warlock, I have a Night Elf Hunter, and I have a Night Elf Priest and some bank characters. So if you don't know what 
any of this means, that's okay, because I will be explaining it to you in this video. So when you start World of Warcraft, you're going to want to decide what type of character you want to make. So, I will start a brand new character, and let's have a look at what the races and classes are. So, first off, you need to decide if you want to make an alliance or a horde character. Apart from the aesthetics of the appearances of the characters, there's really not too much that's different about the characters, but the story will be quite different depending on if you play it from an alliance or a horde perspective. It's pretty much generalized that the alliance is the good side and the horde are the bad side, but with the past couple of expansions, the story's slightly merged with that. So let's have a look at what characters and races we have. So we have Alliance on the left and Horde on the right. So as you can see, I don't have these races unlocked, and the reason for that is you do need to do certain achievements in the game to unlock them on the Horde side, and these races here you will need to unlock respectively by doing certain achievements on the Alliance side. So the races that you can immediately access are humans, dwarves, night elves, gnomes, Draenei, Wogan, and Pandaren. Pandarens can be alliance or horde, and you can choose a male or female of either of these. So I'll show you the female version. Now, you can choose to change your gender at any point throughout the game, so if you don't really like the appearance of the gender you chose, you can switch it at any time. So those are the races of the Alliance, and now let's have a look at the Horde side. So we have Orcs, Undead, Torrents, Trolls, Blood Elves, Goblins, Pandarens again, because they could be Alliance and Horde. And I'll show you the males of those, Pandaren, Goblin, Blood Elf, Troll, Tauren, Undead, and an Orc. So once you've decided on what gender and what race looks the coolest to you, so right now I'm going to pick a called Tyran. Actually, let's pick something that you could immediately access. Pandaren, shall we pick a pan? Let's do Pandaren. Okay. So now you need to decide what type of character you want to be. Do you want to be a damaged focus character? Do you want to heal? Do you want to be a tank? And a tank means that you take on almost the leadership and control of a group. So you will be leading the group, you will be taking on much of the more aggressive enemies. And you'll be hit on basically, and the DPS will be protecting you with damage. You don't necessarily put out the most damage, but you do, I guess, have leadership um, over the group. So once you've decided who looks cool to you, have a look now at the specs that you can be, or well, the class. So you can have warriors, and it says warriors are plate-wearing fighters who strive for perfection in armed combat. As warriors fight, they generate rage, which is used to power special attacks. So they can be a tank or a DPS, but they cannot be healers. Hunters. Hunters are at home in the wilderness and have a special affinity for beasts. They rely on their weaponry and their pet to deal damage. So all of these classes on the game, no matter which class you pick, whether it's warrior, hunter, mage, rogue, priest, warlock, paladin, druid, shaman, monk, demon hunter, or death knight, have specs. And those specs will allow you to have a different skill set for your character. 
So for example, you could be a marksman hunter, which typically has one pet, or you can have a beast mastery hunter, which has two pets, or you can be a survival hunter. The important part about Warcraft is not about what does the most damage, or what heals the best, or what tanks the best. The most important part for starting out with Warcraft is finding a race you love, and a class you love, and a spec you love. That's the absolute most important part, nothing else. That is just a whole other um, consideration. Okay, so they have hunters. Mage, which is my favourite. Mages are the iconic mage users of Azeroth, who learn their craft through intense research and study. They make up for their light armour with a potent array of offensive and defensive spells. So this is what I use most predominantly. They are not tanks, they are not healers, they are only ranged damage. Now, it's showing an example of a spell you could cast, so I'm pretty sure they just cast Meteor. And this is an intellect spell. So, you can be a fire mage, so you use pyro spells. You can be a ice mage, or frost mage, like that. And you can cast frost at the enemy. Or you can be an arcane mage, which is more astral, space-like purple spells. But they're really, really a vibrant, wonderful class. Love them. Rogues. Rogues often serve as assassins or scouts, though many are lone wolves as well. Rogues can often sneak around enemies or attack an opponent from behind to try and finish them off quickly. So they cannot tank and they cannot heal. They, again, are only melee damage. So they are your DPS character in the game. So people love to use rogues because they're very good at PvP. They have a whole bunch of different um, useful skills in groups. They're just a very useful character all around. Not my thing, but they have their place. Priests. Priests are incredible. And again, you're seeing examples with each of the Pandaren classes here of an example of a spell you could perform as that class. So, so this is a priest. Priests are well-rounded healers with a variety of tools, however they can also sacrifice their healing to deal damage with shadow magic. So as you can see here, a priest can either be a healer or a ranged DPS. So you can either damage the enemy or heal, but they are very very good at switching between healing and damage. Very useful, and their spells are super elegant. And I'll show you some examples of other races performing the same spells. So now, not every race can be every class, which is why you have a variety of different characters on the game. So a Pandaren, for example, cannot be a Warlock, a Paladin, a Druid, or a Demon Hunter. So let's see an example of what a Warlock can be. So when you highlight this, it shows you. So you can be a Worgen, a Gnome, a Dwarf, or a Human. We'll ignore the bonus races right now because those need to be earned. Or on the Horde side, you can be a Goblin, Blood Elf, Troll, Undead, or Orc Warlock. So let's have a look at an example of a Warlock you can actually be. Let's say, let's say a Blood Elf. Warlock. So Warlocks again are only DPS and they have so many fascinating spells that you can use. Warlocks cast fire or shadow magic to damage, drain, or curse their enemy. They summon demons as servants, so they have a lot of different backups. You can have pets to protect you and minions, so a little bit of the aggression of the game is taken off of your back. And you have a lot of support, like from these imps. But you can have different minions and pets to support you. Um, warlocks, in some degree, can heal themselves minimally, but they're a very good balanced class to take care of themselves and DPS very aggressively. So let's go to Paladin. So this would be an example of a Blood Elf Paladin. Now this is one of the very rare examples of a class being able to be all three a tank, 
to hold the aggression of the damage, a healer, or a melee, so they can do everything, depending on the spec you choose. So this is a wonderful example of a suggestion I would offer to you on what character you might want to be. Paladins are heavily armoured fighters and defenders who use holy magic to heal wounds and combat evil. They can focus on two-handed weapons, shields, or healing. Very versatile. Their clothing is beautiful, their armour looks wonderful that you can collect throughout the game. But in this instance, a blood elf cannot be only two things. They cannot be a druid or a shaman. So let's have a look at an example of a druid. So a druid can be not many races. It can be a night elf or a wargan, or a tauren, a troll, or a troll. That's it. You can only be four of the base races. So let's have a look at a night elf druid, which is very common. There we go. Druids are shapeshifters with an affinity for the plant and animal kingdoms. Druids can specialise in healing, casting spells at range, or taking on the form of a cat or bear to fight in melee. This is another example of an excellent both race and class that I would suggest because it's super versatile and druids I think are even more wonderful to use because they can switch very quickly without having to change specs specifically for the demand necessary in the fight. So if you need on-the-go tanking, on-the-go healing, on-the-go range damage, on-the-go DPS, Druid is your best bet. Very versatile, they're doing very well right now. And if animals are your thing, you can shapeshift into a whole bunch of different animals. You can be different cats, you can be birds, you can be owls. They're wonderful, wonderful um, class to be. would highly suggest a druid, even though I don't have one. I am going to make one, but I would highly suggest it. So as you can see, night elves can't be warlocks, paladins, or shamans, so we're going to have to find an example to look at of what could be a shaman. So, let's go to a draenei. So a draenei shaman. Shaman use the power of the elements to enhance their weapon damage or spells. Shaman summon totems in combat. Small objects that disable enemies heal or cause damage to enemies. Another very versatile class again. You can heal. Shamans are excellent healers and they have range damage and melee damage which is not what a lot of classes have in the game. So very versatile. They can shapeshift also into animals but definitely not as many as druids if that's your thing. But they have a lot of elemental spells. Very fun, very colourful. But definitely not the most colourful spellcaster on the game. Monks. Monks are absolutely fantastic, completely underused classes on the game. I think they're underused because they're not super interesting to look at. They don't really perform very interesting attacks or spells, but very, very useful if that's your thing. Monks are known for their skill in hand-to-hand -hand fighting, relying on their fists and feet as much as their weapons. Monks can also specialise in calling upon the restorative power of the mists to heal allies. Another very, very good class to go for. They are, again, a trio, so they can tank, they can heal, they can do DPS damage. Incredibly useful. Always needed, always useful. So again, if you're looking for, respectively, either an independent experience with WoW, or if you'd like to play with a group of people, it's great, no matter what. So Demon Hunters are the newest class to the game. There we go. They're the newest class to the game, but they can only be played by two races. Um, night Elves or Blood Elves. They look kind of similar, no matter what. See? Pretty, pretty similar. Okay. Demon Hunters are a hero class, which means they start at a high level. Demon Hunters are dark outcasts that use forbidden demonic magic to hunt and kill their enemies. 
demon hunters can be tag, hold the aggression, or they can be DPS, they cannot be healers. Their self-healing is okay, but it's not wonderful, but super interesting class to use, very acrobatic, as you can see, they fly all over the place, they look super demonic, they're easily one of the coolest um, race classes on the game. So, very interesting in their own right. And we get to the final class, which is the Death Knight. Death Knights are a hero class, which means they start at high level. Death Knights are a melee class with an emphasis on causing diseases and using dark magic. Excellent appearing class again. There are two things to note about the classes in this game. All of these classes here, from warrior to monk, start at level 1. But a demon hunter and a death knight, I believe, start around level 8. So you get a little bit of a boost, naturally, from using these classes. I don't know why, but makes the leveling experience quicker. So I guess in that regard, I probably wouldn't suggest these to start out. I think the leveling experience is a wonderful thing to try out for the first time. So I think for the broader experience, I would suggest any of these other classes, but obviously try whatever you like. I think it's just incredible to see people play Warcraft anyway. So these can tank or do melee, they cannot heal but they do have excellent, excellent self-healing. They are a pain in the butt to fight in PvP because they some of their specs have excellent self-healing. Wonderful. And they control the undead, if that's your thing. So there you go. So these are exceptionally versatile. To my knowledge, a Death Knight, it appears, can be played by everybody. Goodness, I didn't know that. That's cool. So there you go. So now that I've shown you the races and the classes, obviously now it's going to be up to you to decide what takes your fancy. Again, don't worry about what a guide says, don't worry about what anything says. The way I looked at this game is what race looked really cool, what spells looked really cool, and I picked it. And if I didn't like it, you can just roll another character. Doesn't matter. Enjoy. It's yours to enjoy. Okay. My favourites, by the way, have to be Lightforge Draenei. Not a death knight, though. I have a Lightforge Paladin. Just so cool. So you can unlock these races. Void Elves, Lightforge Draenei, Dark Iron Dwarves, Kul Tyrans. Actually, let's have a look at them. Void Elves are really pretty. Lightforge Draenei, Dark Iron Dwarves, Cold Tyrants, and Machinums. So they can all be unlocked through progression throughout the game. You do have to do very specific things in specific expansions to unlock them. These two is one expansion. I think this is BFA. I don't remember now. But these two are also one expansion as well. So depending on when you would like to unlock them or when you would like to prioritize unlocking them that's up to you and nightborns cool high mountain torrents kind of like a torn but i don't know the difference <laughs> i don't know i don't want to play old my car orcs they're really cool especially the males they're, they're huge um Zandalari trolls those are Excellent, incredible druids. They have some beautiful skins. You can be uh, raptors and, and really cool looking bears with the Zandalari troll druid or just a troll druid. Actually, let's have a look at that. Will it, show, will it change? Yeah, look at that. that. Look at all the wonderful potentials of a druid. They're great. Druids are great. And you have Volperas, which is a super, super popular brand new race to the game. They're so cute, and they're small and fun, and they can play pretty much everything minus Demon Hunter, Druid, and a Paladin. Super fun. So these races can only be played on the Horde side, and these races can only be played on the Alliance side. 
and that would be your first character and then from there you can make whatever you want again so for me today i am going to start out just with reliance because it's what i know and i'm going to make a female because all of my characters are female night elf for the aesthetic druid there are slight bonuses depending on the race but don't worry about it they're all about the same don't worry about it though just pick what you like at first and then from there explore read up whatever you want to do don't worry about it pick what looks cool okay so now we've chosen a night elf druid because we want to turn into a kitty you can have a clash trial a clash trial is a boosted character i need to say by the way the game goes from level one to the level you start at all the way up to level 60 and you get to level 60 by doing quests doing the story and just playing the content of the game but a class trial gives you all of the skills that you would have at a level 48 character for just about an hour or so because when you start out at level one you don't have all of the skills and traits just given to you you do have to earn them again just by playing the game in whatever fashion you like it's free to play it's free to use don't need to worry about that and then once you're done it just ends the trial and then you can use that as many times as you feel like no matter what class what um race whatever you want but we're gonna start from level one okay so name I've run out of Lemurex names and Lima names. I actually think I had um, Lima at one point. Did I take that? That name is unavailable. Did I take Lima? Or did someone else take Lima? Anyway, so depending on the realm you pick to play on, you will have a more of a generalized experience. Now, when you pick your realm, it's best to pick a realm that's closest to your country just the connection's easier and then it's best to pick one that's high population just because it's a little bit more interactive people that pick a low population server tend to like more of an independent experience whether that's going for mounts or things like that normally money making things like that you can pick whatever realm and server you want You'll see if one's high population, low population, and you can look up the balance between Alliance and Horde on there. If it's predominantly Horde and you're playing an Alliance character, I wouldn't suggest it. It probably won't be a fun time. You want one, I would suggest, that is balanced because you'll have the support of your team and when you're fighting the other team, it should be even. So you'll have a balanced experience no matter what, even if you want to switch from Alliance to Horde. It's just my suggestion. I'm on Dalaran, which is slightly more Horde, but plenty of Alliance to have a nice balanced experience. And again, another reason that you might want to pick a low population server is names. Um, I'm not f familiar with exactly how this works, but depending on what server or realm you pick, you will have name choices. Now, there are several Lemurexes in the world. They're just playing on different realms, servers, whatever. Um, I have a Lemurex on Dalaran. Someone else has a Lemurex that isn't me on another server slash realm. So if a name is important to you, you can always cycle through realms to find the name on a different realm. But high population realm slash servers do tend to have most of the common names taken like in this regard i think i took lima i don't know but for example um the word lima is probably available on several servers but probably low population servers so we'll just take a randomized name for now snoddyth that's terrible opal that's why they have very um, obscure names left because a lot of people, can't look like mine for a second, have a lot of um, 
common words taken. And you can use accents on letters if you just desperately want a certain word. Who took ASMR the last time? I swear, about a few weeks ago, I literally looked up if ASMR was taken and it wasn't. That, that is, that is ridiculous. I'm actually looking right now for a second. Yeah, it's on Dalaran. And see, here you can change your realm. Do whatever you feel like. So here, as you can see, the realms are split up into United States, Oceanic, Latin America, Brazil, and tournament. Okay, so this is an American Warcraft account. If you're playing in a different region of the world, you might get different things to pop up, like Europe, for example, does not have any realms here. So for people that live in different parts of the world, you might pick one of these. Um, but if you have a US Warcraft account, at least you'll have these options and as you can see one is full low high new low medium high and that's and you can also have a role-playing experience if you that's your thing but there you go type normal and there you go just just pick from there whatever your account offers you. So I, for example, I don't think if I picked right now, I've never done this, which is probably why I'm a little perplexed. Let's go to this one, Thorian Brotherhood, logging into game server. Now let's make that Night Elf Druid again. Can I make ASMR in here? This is a learning experience for me. I can. So if you pick a different realm, so I just picked a low population realm, you can probably find another name there. Okay, like Lemurex, for example. Can I have Lemurex on here? I could have Lemurex. So it just depends on the nature of what name you would like. Basically what's more important to you is having a certain name more important or having an overall balanced Populi popularized, populated experience on WoW. So we're going to go back to just Dalaran. And again, because this is a high populated um, realm, um, probably going to struggle finding a lot of normal words and names. Dandwilorn. So again, just depends on what you want or like. I kind of like that. So we're going to have Serugularus. Regularus. Okay. All right. So with the release of Warcraft Shadowlands, there's been a lot more ways that you can change and alter your race around. Races like Night Elves, Blood Elves, Void Elves get a lot of options. Unfortunately, there are some races like some of the new ones like Nightborn, they don't get as many options. So again, if that's a preference of yours, you might want to pick maybe a race like that. Night Elf, Blood Elf, things like that. So let's start with... First off, I want a female. With the name. Cool. So now we pick a skin colour. You can have everything from peachy pink, greys and peaches. You can have more of a grey colour. Off greys. Cool tones, dark tones. Whatever you please for your character. So let's go with, I've always liked this blue colour here. This one's quite nice too, let's pick that. And then you can pick a face type. So this is kind of like Sims, but basic. Let's pick, I, th 
think this is my night elf with this face and I should never have picked that because there's so many more friendly faces. This is nice. That's a nice friendly face. So you can choose to have various different hairstyles in the game. Let's do this one. I like this one with the shaved, almost plaited side. That's cool. And let's take off vines for a second. And let's... There's vines around the face here. We'll have to figure that out in a second. And then from here, we'll pick our hair colour. Different races get different options. Just depends on what you pick. Night elves and things like that tend to have really fun options. Night elves are my favourite race though, so. I have, um, for my character, I think I have purple, don't I? Yeah, I've never changed the colour. I think it's always been this, this, this. Let's do that, that looks so fun vine colour. So I have a headband on now, apparently, and I can change the headband colour to whatever I want. I like this blue because it's a nice contrasting colour. And our ears, we can have thin, thick, feral, short, or rough. I'm getting dobby vibes. I like the thin ones. They're pointy. And now we can pick out jewellery. So we can have scars, if that's your thing. This one um, defaulted to a claw. I think the claw's actually quite cool. The eye colours since Shadowlands updated has been incredible. So we have white, blue, yellow, white, grey, blue, grey, yellow, brown, grey, white, blue, grey, more blue, brown, yellow, and just black. Super cool. I like this one. I'm gonna pick that one. So this is a headdress, so we can change it to a circlet. We'll have nothing on. Let's do... Let's do the... no. Let's do none. Earrings, crescents, rings, bracelets. Let's do none again. You can have a nose ring, you can have a ring, a septum, or a stud. I think it's odd that they have this type of jewellery. Um, let's do none. Necklace, you can have a chain, a choker, or a vine. I'm gonna pick a vine, I actually like it there. And you can have markings, you can choose to have none, or you can have the traditional night elf markings. Um, my character does, I've kept them on there. I think they're, uh, Oh, I don't remember now. Something like this. Let's pick this. It's kind of cool. And that's it, I think. And you can pick your markings colours. I like the uh, red there. Let's go back to this and change the the eyebrows to like calm down a little bit. Hmm. Long or short? Long. And the vine colour, let's switch that to... I like the purple. Okay, so that's our character complete, Cerugloris. Alright, so you can choose to start in Exiles Reach. It's brand new, I've tried it, it's a little sterile. It's... I don't think it's a very immersive, true, authentic Warcraft experience. I would highly suggest anything that is in Exile's Reach. So depending on the race you pick, you're going to have a different starter area. So don't pick this. This is a terrible representation of Warcraft. This is the original. This is the newer experience. All right, Sarugorus, let's play. Man, I'm mad at myself for not taking ASMR. Who took ASMR on Dalaran? 
We may never know. Okay, so I'm just good. After years of imprisonment within the Emerald Nightmare, Arc Druid Malfurion Storm Rage has finally returned to the mortal world. Reunited with his love, Tyranda Whisperwind, Malfurion endeavors now to heal the corrupted world tree Teldrassil and rejuvenate the spirit of the Night Elf people. Yet as the great cataclysm shakes the boughs of their colossal tree, the Night Elves brace themselves against the coming storm. As war and destruction close in from all sides, it falls to Night Elves like you to stand strong and protect the enduring legacy of your people. Okay, so let's just get all of this out here and whatever to go away. All right, this is the beginning of the Night Elf. This is the beginning of the Night Elf experience of Warcraft. I believe every race is different. Pretty certain every race is different. So, this is Shadow Glen. This would be the starting area that you would pick absolutely definitely over Exile's Reach for your Night Elf. And look at that! You're completely surrounded by other Night Elves who are just starting out. Your first leveling experience with WoW is a very unique experience that should be treasured. So I'm just going to be chatting now about the starting experience. I could be here for days explaining Warcraft, but I will try to condense the basics into a short segment. This guy is a quest is auto accepted that's helpful and your quests will be down here so you can read the law that goes with it and it says here that you get 200 experience for doing the quest that this guy gives you throughout the game you will pick up more quests do dungeons pick up professions pick up skills things like that like this person just leveled up to level two by giving in a quest and you will do different things and use different means to level your character up to a max of level 60. You can halt your experience, you can hold your leveling experience to whatever you please if you want to focus in a more authentic way on a certain expansion. Warcraft is broken up into several expansions. You can play any of them as you please, whatever your preference is. So um, there are two major hubs for alliance players and horde players. The major hub for alliance players is Stormwind, so that is where the majority of characters gather pretty much from any expansion you choose to play. And for horde characters it is Ogrimmar, so that is where all of their characters would gather. Um, it tends to have everything you need there to pick up professions, use the auction house if you want to buy things, um, change your gender at the barber shop, or get a haircut, whatever you want, whatever you please, but they, they are the gathering points for players in the game. Um, I think we're in Don Houses right now, so they kind of have their own like, smaller leveled gathering area. So this is the Shadow Glen, this is where we are. So we're up here in Teldrassil. Darkshore has Donassus somewhere around here. Oh my goodness, I've played this long enough now. I should there we go. Darkshore Donassus is somewhere in there. So it starts you here, but as you level, you will be naturally guided to different expansions and parts of the game. You'll be asked when you hit certain levels what expansion you would like to play. There are experience benefits to some, but I'm not even going to discuss those because I want you truly to have the most authentic build your own Warcraft experience. So, so as you can see, Northrend up here will be Lich King content and it gives you a suggestion of the level you want to be, so that says probably level 25 to 30. So if we pull up the map, we have Kalimdor 
and here it says you can be level 1 to 30 they suggest to do this content so this is great for new players and as you can see as you go down a little bit more 7 to 30 10 to 30 Feralas is 15 to 30 so as you travel naturally throughout the game you will be brought to different places look at this guy start in trouble go away look at this Go away, go away, go away. That's what I'm talking about, yeah. Fear my level one night off. This, look at this guy. This is why, by the way, in Warcraft we have two modes. Warcraft war mode on, war mode off. Right now, if you see the blue above our names, that is war mode off. Thank goodness, because if we had war mode on, that guy had um, his name in yellow, which means he wants trouble. If you had war mode on, he would um, be able to PvP, player versus player you, and attack you. So he was from an enemy um, group. He was from the Horde. He was an Orc Death Knight. So he wanted trouble. No fun. I would suggest for an authentic playing experience with your first character, keep war mode off. It won't even let me look at my talents. Wow. So, there will be an option for war mode. Sometimes it auto turns it on, but I would suggest keeping it off because you will probably just get honestly quite a miserable time from people attacking you who have way more levels than you and just over and over again it's no fun if you're wondering what the benefit of having war mode on is you get more experience so you tend to level faster or you get more gold things like that try the game out and i really hope you enjoy it um obviously i'm not the best at explaining guides i think especially as something as big as warcraft but that's the basics from here explore the game enjoy the game but this does remind me that i do need to have a druid and if you're wondering by the way will you be able to use mounts or flying mounts yes eventually but not yet so for example if we look here on my mounts Mounts are a count bound, so you can use any of them on any character, it doesn't matter. As long as they're not... As long as they're single player specific. So like, I could use all of these mounts. I can't use a mount yet though, because I need the apprentice riding skill. So I have to level up just a little bit, get a little bit of gold, and then I can buy using mounts at a certain speed on this character. You do sadly how to buy using your mounts on every character but like I said I could be here for days explaining this and I would happily um maybe I will do another video explaining the content in just a little bit let me know what you think so that is my beginner's intro to the world of Warcraft Thank you so much for watching this video today. If you do play it well, let me know what you think about it. I really hope you enjoy it. So, quick summary. Try to keep war mode off for your first character. I would suggest not doing Exile's Reach. Pick whatever character you want, whatever looks cool, whatever class sounds cool, whatever race sounds cool. I would suggest a high population server if you want more of a varied populated experience. I would suggest a low population realm experience for those that want a specific name or want a more of an isolated experience. Preferably I would probably encourage people to go for a high population experience. Anything else? No. Have fun. Have fun. Be kind to others. Um, there is a help support group 
Um, I think it's like a Murloc help system for new characters, so you can use that, and there will be an in-game real person who will help you answer your questions and help you with the game too. It's a really, really sweet experience, so please enjoy the game. Thank you so much for watching this video. Take care, everybody. Goodbye.